Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm really excited for today's video. I am going to be doing the wish list tag. I originally saw Mandy Lee and Sarah Hubler Hubler do this tag video recently and I thought it'd be a really fun one. And so I searched makeup wish list tag and I have their 10 questions. And then there was also a previous makeup wish list tag that I stole a couple of questions off of too. So I have 13 questions relating to my personal makeup wish list to share with you guys today so if you are interested then stay tuned first if you haven't already subscribed to our channel i hope you'll consider subscribing before you leave today i do post a minimum of four times a week so if that's something that interests you then don't forget to subscribe before leaving today and other than that let's just jump into the video all right you guys i will have all of the questions linked in my description box down below in case you yourself are interested in doing this tag i would love to see everyone else do this tag video and just see what your responses would be. And then I will also have Mandy and Sarah's channel linked down below so you can check out their original videos. But let's just jump right into it. The first question is, what is the oldest item on your wish list? And the oldest item on my Sephora wish list. So Sephora is where I usually have like the longest wish list. Some on Ulta and then like some just like floating around in my head kind of. But the oldest item on my Sephora wish, wish list is actually the Tatcha Dewy Skin Mist. Now I have owned in, um, I have owned this in a mini size in the past, but this has been on my wish list for so incredibly long and I still can't get myself to take it off my wish list because even though I feel like you can go a little bit too heavy handed with that specific glow mist, there's still something about it that's just so luxurious and so special and I just really like it from time to time. So. I have tried this product, but it remains on my wish list as a reminder that if I ever want to pick up the full size, there it is to remind me. Um, question number two is the newest item on your wish list, and these actually haven't even launched yet, assuming that this video goes up in time. Maybe it'll already have launched. We'll see. Um, but the Lawless Beauty Blushes, oh my gosh. I will definitely be, I'm definitely super interested in these. I think the one I'm most interested in is like the most neutral, like mauve pink blush. Um, it looks like they're pretty much very, it looks like a lot of them are very vibrant blushes, but I really love Lawless as a brand and they have, you know, not a ton of skews. I've tried quite a bit from them. Still not their foundation, which I'm interested in trying. Uh, Lawless is a brand that I am interested in doing like a dedicated review on the brand on my channel at some point. Uh, so I definitely do intend to pick up one of those blushes down the road, but it is definitely the newest item on my wish list. Uh, question number three is an item on your wish list that you keep forgetting about. And for me, this had to go to the, to the Clinique Nude Cheek Pop. It's one of those items that I always know in the back of my mind that I'm interested in and it'll end up in my cart and then I'll be like, oh, I have my carts too much, like I don't wanna spend this much and I'll come off my wish list and then I'll be in store shopping around and I'll end up in my basket because I know it's on my wish list. Like it's something I want to try and then I'll know my total is going to be too much. And I'm like, oh, like, I really don't need this blush. But still, I am so interested in trying the nude cheek pop from Clinique. I love that blush formula. I actually recently picked up Honey Pop this year because... My store was out of the nude cheek pop. I actually was going to purchase it. They were out and the honey cheek pop is beautiful. Probably as close to the nude cheek pop as you could get. But that is one that has been on my wish list for years and still have not bitten the bullet on that one. Question number four is an item that you are thankful that you removed from your wish list. There are a couple I could have mentioned, but one specifically that came to mind was the Caudalie, Caudalie Beauty Elixir. So this retails for $49 and I specifically remember it was probably 2016 or 2017. Madison Miller was talking about this elixir and how it was beautiful for the skin, yada, yada, yada. Um, and she like, when she applied it, it looked beautiful. It gave her a beautiful glow, but it's $49 for water essence. <laughs> Just seems super expensive. In fact, I actually ended up buying like the Caudalie grape water, which was only $22, which was fine. But at the end of the day, it just felt like water in a can. 
Ugh. And I just like at this point, like I have tried a few Caudalie products and I'm just not that impressed. Um, for the most part, I do really like the moisturizer that I recently tried from them forget what it's called I really 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 like that um, but other than that a lot of Caudalie products I just think are like very overpriced for what they are so definitely not mad that I ended up not purchasing that and removing it from my makeup wish list question number five is a product that is on your wish list that you can't that isn't easily accessible to you and for this it's pretty much any Linda Hallberg cosmetics so I have never actually tried to order off of the Linda Hallberg website but I am always blown away by her releases I always think that they are so beautiful they're so eye-catching and there's so many things that I've wanted to try but I believe and I could be very wrong is Linda Hallberg based out of Germany? I might be very wrong on that. Regardless, I know it's not a US based brand, therefore I'm not sure what shipping would look like, if there would be customs, anything like that. So that's something that's always steered me away from purchasing from the brand. But again, every, all of her holiday eyeshadow palette quads, I'm like, like drooling over. So definitely a brand that I'm interested in trying, but and pretty much the whole brand in general is just on my wish list, but I can't get it by me. I mean, I know I could eventually get it if I wanted it, but it would be difficult and probably a little bit expensive. Oh, don't make fun of my orange hands. When I woke up this morning, <laughs> I was like tickling my daughter to wake her up and she was like, gross, mom, your hands are dirty. And I'm like, they're not dirty. I just did not do a good job with my self tan. So I'm pretty sure my hands are like far darker than my arms. Next is uh, next is an item on your wish list that you probably won't buy. This one makes me really sad because I probably won't buy it, but this is something that I think has been out for two summers now, maybe three, and when it first released, I thought for sure I was going to buy it, and it is the Violet, Bla Violet Voss Flamingo Palette. And I thought it was such like an eye-catching color story, just very vibrant, bright for the summer. It released in the summer, and I was really interested in trying it. But at the end of the day, I was looking at the color scheme, and I was like, I just feel like this is not going to be the most wearable everyday palette for me. And also at that time, I wasn't experimenting with color as much as I am now. You guys, I have been having so much fun playing with makeup lately, I will go in and be like, I have no idea what I want to do today, or I'll have a general idea of what I want to do, and then it turns out to be nothing like what I anticipated, but I have just gotten to be so creative, and even though I know my blending still needs work, I have really been having fun with color, just with different makeup techniques. Today, I did another blue and purple look. I feel like when I do my a palette a day for like 30 days at the end of June, it's going to be like so many blue slash purpley pink looks looks um that's just been my vibe lately and then hopefully like probably through summer I'll play around more with like really warm tones like reds and oranges but I've just been having fun with color and now I lost my train of thought um the Violet Voss Flamingo palette wanted to buy it when it first released talked myself out of it then the following summer was still available thought about buying it again and when I was looking through my wish list I saw it again and I was like ugh it's still so pretty and there's some really pretty like teals and purples in there that really 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 have my attention and I just go back and forth and back and forth like it's been out now for like you know at least two years like do I really need it but I feel like I would get a lot of use out of it but ah, I'm just so torn I feel like it's one I probably won't end up purchasing for myself but I also could see myself just one day being like you know what F it I'm just gonna buy the flamingo palette question number seven is a wishlist item that you believe that you will buy next um I think it's either going to come down to some more single shadows from JD glow cosmetics I recently purchased three from the website I'm trying to support more black owned business owners I'm trying to some I'm trying to support more black owned cosmetics companies JD glow cosmetics is one of them and there are some beautiful singles I'm interested in purchasing from them either that or I also have like 15 singles saved from the give me glow cosmetics website I've recently tested out both of their the shadows specifically their shimmers and I'm blown away by both brands so 
maybe I'll purchase both on the same day, but I am excited to be playing around more with singles and kind of, I want to do my own curated like blue single palette, green single palette, etc. so that it's easier for me when I want to play with color. I feel like it'll just be easier for me to like pull out all my single green shades or whatever it might be. So as we reach like the latter half of this year, I think I'm more going to focus on curating my own single eyeshadow palettes and testing out some more indie brands for sure. Question number eight is a product you've added to your wish list from watching YouTube. And I could pretty much say my entire wish list is probably from watching YouTube. But one that really stuck out to me was the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand. You guys, I want to try this so bad. And I, this is another one where I've had it like in my basket, carrying it around with me through Sephora. And then when I get down to the nitty gritty, I'm like, okay, what are we going to take out? Cause we're a little bit over budget right now. And I'm like, maybe I should finish up my Kevin Aquan contour powder before I buy the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand. And then oh, I'll just see someone else talk about how they love this contour wand. And I'm like, I need that in my life. Uh, but for sure a lot of Charlotte Tilbury like I don't even know if I would have known about Charlotte Tilbury as a brand if I didn't watch YouTube so that is definitely the first thing that came to mind question number nine is the most affordable product on your wish list this one makes me laugh so it's actually not even a makeup product but from Nails Inc., they have a nail polish duo on Sephora's website for $15. It's the Flock You Nail Polish Duo, and it's like a really vibrant hot pink, and I think like a shimmery peach shade. And I've just been really into nail polish again lately. Um, I am missing nail polish on my thumb. Neat. But I recently painted my nails. I'm embarrassed again by my self tan. Um, recently painted my nails with a new Essie polish. I purchased like probably eight new Essie polishes this year. <laughs> I like was off the nail polish buying train for a solid like two and a half years. And now it's like we've hopped aboard and we're up to like the, do they have a captain seat on trains? Cause I feel like I'm, I'm up there on the Essie polish train. Um, the next question is the most expensive product on your wish list, and I have a tie between the Natasha Denona Biba palette and the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. Both are $129, and I honestly don't know if I could decide between the two of them. I love the Metropolis palette because it has like the beautiful brown neutrals, but it also has the greens in there, and you guys know I melt for green eyeshadow. But I also love the Biba palette because I feel like it's just such a great day-to-day -day palette. It would be perfect for travel, it would be perfect for work, it just would be like a staple, you know? And both retail for $129 very expensive um okay so then the other three questions that i added from the other wish list tag videos that i saw is a perfume that's on your wish list and i actually just recently added this to my wish list it's from the brand ellis brooklyn i might be mispronouncing that but it is the salt perfume and it just sounds like a very summery scent almost like you're by the ocean and just you know and i feel like in my collection i have my staple winter scents i love mac uh velvet teddy it smells like tobacco and vanilla mm. and it also reminds me of drunk people because i oh my gosh you guys i was wearing that perfume at work one day and an incredibly intoxicated lady came into work and i thought she might die and i was like trying to help her like calm down until paramedics got here and you could just like smell the booze radiating off of her I think I think I got drunk from just standing by her and I think I smelled like whiskey for the rest of the, the day too which kind of like it you know it fits the aesthetic of the vanilla and the tobacco but I always think of that when I wear that perfume still love the perfume um and then also I love the by the fireside perfume from replica but I feel like I don't have, I don't have it nailed when it comes to spring and summer scents. Like I don't want to smell so masculine in the summer. I want like a fresh scent, but nothing fruity. I don't like fruity scents. Something like clean. Um, I do like, um, I think it's a lazy Sunday morning from Replica. I like, not an absolute fave. And then there's like a beach walk one too, which I, I like. 
but it wouldn't be an absolute fave. So I'm looking for some good summer scents if you guys have recommendations. Again, I like more like clean scents for the summertime. Um, and I also, I like in the wintertime, I like more masculine scents. If you can like get a sense for the notes that I like and then leave your recommendations down below, I would love it. Question number 12 is a new release you're looking most forward to and you guys. I, again, am trying to get more into uh, indie makeup and indie brands and supporting smaller businesses, black owned businesses, etc. And Midas Cosmetics like really has my attention right now. And they are releasing a flower bomb palette. I'll try and post a picture here on the screen and you can pre-order it right now. And I think it comes out on like July 15th. This years ago would not have fit my makeup aesthetic at all because it is very colorful but as I said I'm really getting into colors and playing around with colors etc so when I saw this I don't know I just like immediately like I could feel the drool coming out of my mouth um and I really really want this and it's only $29 which I feel like is a really fair price I have not tried anything from Midas but they are an Afro Latina owned makeup brand as well so I would love to support them um have you guys tried the Midas formula let me know I could definitely see myself purchasing that and then finally the last question is an eyeshadow palette that you are lusting over the most <sighs> It's the Pat McGrath Divine Rose 2. I almost purchased this and I was like, oh, reel it in, girlfriend. I, ha I have a haul coming. Um, I have a haul coming and I purchased, I think, at least one, if not two other Pat McGrath things that were relatively expensive because, again, trying to support the black-owned beauty brands. Uh, and I really wanted to try, spoiler alert, for the haul. I really wanted to try the Pat McGrath foundation because Samantha March raves about it. And honestly, Samantha March could mention something one time and I would want to buy it. But like when she repetitively talks about a product that works for her, I'm, there's no saving me. I'm definitely going to buy it every time. So I purchased that and I was this close, this close to buying the Divine Rose 2. But I talked myself out of it. I was like, you know what? You know what? You have your JD Glow Cosmetics singles that you just got. And they're really cool. They're like very multi-dimensional. And I was like, you know, that's what I love the Pat McGrath palettes for is that they have those really special shades. You can find really special shades through these indie brands. Let me tell you. So I have talked myself out of it for the time being. Would it be something that maybe will end up in my collection in the future? <laughs> I sure hope so, uh, but it's so expensive. Um, but after that, you guys, that is going to wrap it up for this wish list tag. I definitely hope to see many of you do this as well. I would love, I just would love to hear everyone else's answers. What else is on your guys' wish list? Do let me know. Other than that, thank you so much for sticking around to watch today's video and for supporting my channel as you always do. And I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye.